Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2013 release Under the Skin starring Scarlett Johansson and it is an A24 film so if anyone watching this hasn't watched the movie yet I would say I recommend this so stop the review and go watch it because there will be spoilers in this but do know up front it is an A24 studio film so a lot of their films their horror films are kind of more artsy, more slow paced, and this one is probably more so on that side of the spectrum than most of the A24 films. It's very slow, it's very artsy, um, there's a lot more kind of like under the skin to the film, like it's kind of says, and I'm actually going to refer to that quite a few times. The um, So the, the title means a few things in this instance. The other thing to note is I'm doing this review... Um, recording of my review before I'm doing this for a live stream. So if you I'm putting it out the same day as we're going to do the live stream. So if you catch this on the Saturday it comes out, that would be the 4th of July, Saturday. We're doing a live stream at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk in depth about this film if anyone has anything else to throw in about it or questions or whatever. So anyway, under the Skin, directed by Jonathan Glazer, uh, who mainly in the beginning just did music videos, and then he did the films Birth and Sexy Beast, which I have not seen either of those. I hadn't heard of Birth, but I'd heard of Sexy Beast. I know that got a good amount of acclaim when it came out, so he had a bit of a pedigree before Under the Skin. Uh, it was written by Glazer and Milo Attica, who was then later replaced by Walter Campbell, and it's also based on a book by Michel Faber, or Michael Faber, it's M-I-C-H-E-L, no way, so I assume it's Michel. Um, so Scarlett Johansson, when she was doing this film, it was the year after Avengers came out, the same year as the film's Don John, which I do recommend, I've seen it, that's a good film, uh, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt in it as well, and Her with Joaquin Phoenix, which I've not seen but I've heard very good things about and I need to check out. And this was a year before Captain America Winter Soldier, which I deem to be probably the best Marvel film made. I know a lot of people would refute that, but you can put your grievances down in the comments. I'm just saying. Uh, the actor Adam Pearson, who is used for this, he was the guy who she eventually picks up who's um, who has the facial disfigurement. Um, so that individual, his name is Adam Pearson. He's He has neurofibromatosis and is involved with outreach programs to prevent bullying associated with deformities. Uh, he was cast when Glazer decided not to use prosthetics and contacted the charity called Changing Faces, which supports people with facial disfigurements. So it was really cool to know that this is an instance where the individual is actually employing someone who has the look they're looking for, not going out and saying, okay, we'll just get prosthetics on there and we'll get some other actor. Um, and that individual ends up being very important to the film because that's kind of the moment where things totally change for the female, which that's how I'm going to refer to Scarlett Johansson's character because she's nameless. Well, she, it, is nameless in this. Um, well, I think for the, for the context of the film, it is a she, but um, she's nameless. So just referred to as the female. That's what Internet Movie Database says uh, the name is. So just so you know. Uh, budget it was $13.3 million and ended up making only $7.2 million at the box office, so it lost money, although I think it's one of those films that's kind of, um, it's going to get a lot more attention as time goes on. I think it already has more attention than it got when it initially came out, so I think that'll kind of continue to build in my opinion. Uh, Glazer developed the film over a decade. He started it as a big budget effects heavy idea but then he ended up working it down to being a lot more simple. That way it was more doable for studios. They'd be way more likely to green light that if it's like, you know, if you go to them and they're just like, it's huge budget and it's going to cost a lot versus we can do this for relatively little budget, but make it really good. So it was just smart on his part because otherwise who knows, maybe it wouldn't even have gotten done. And I think it is a film that I'm glad is done. I will say though, it's not one that I would want to watch a whole lot because it is so slow because it is so artsy there's not a lot to bring you back to it. I could see watching it maybe one or two more times and then just totally being done with it forever just to kind of pick apart a few more things about it, kind of confirm some ideas that I have about some underlying metaphors and some things like that. Uh, the, the novel portion, uh, the novel, the novelization, which was the first iteration of the story, 
makes a point uh, of the of the female actually processing human bodies for meat. But the film decided to keep it more ambiguous. Now, knowing that when I went into it, I could see that clearly those scenes where they're in like a black room that you can't see anything else and the men disrobe and start walking towards the female as she's walking away and then they kind of like go down into the black water until they disappear like that is meant to be a more artistic visual representation of them being processed like that that processing of the human meat her consuming them and i think it's even put um it's even taken to a further degree when you get the scene where the one guy goes under and then it shows him while he's kind of underwater which looks amazing by the way and then he sees another guy who had already been consumed by her who's kind of in a state of digestion basically because his you know his skin's getting all flappy and wavy in the in the water and then it eventually kind of like implodes all his bones kind of go away and then he's just like a flapping skin suit basically which i mean that whole scene just looks amazing i mean in general this film looks amazing especially when they do those moments where it's like the meat processing but a, you know, like I was saying, a more artistic way of showing that, well, not showing that, uh, I, I dug that. It was really good. So this is really interesting. The scenes where the men were picked up were not scripted scenes. So those scenes where the guys were either talking to Scarlett Johansson's character while she was in the van or getting into the van and talking while she was driving, that was done unscripted and those guys didn't even know they were in the film yet. Because what had happened is Glazer wanted to make things very realistic. So he kind of fit the van with a few different cameras in strategic places so that people wouldn't recognize them as cameras. That's why the angles do look a little bit weird. Because otherwise, if it was scripted, I guarantee they wouldn't use angles like that on those shots. But knowing that going into it, like when you watch it, you can understand that like, oh, okay, well this makes sense why they're using these tip these types of angles. So he wanted to get a like real reaction. So basically they, they would shoot her going around and talking to these guys and getting them in the van and everything. And then eventually they would reveal to him, okay, well, you were on camera and this is a production of this film. And then they would get them to sign off on using them in the film. And then they would bring them into the cast because obviously they then had to go shoot scripted uh, the, like the meat processing scenes. Um, so these were not actors who just got pulled into the film, which I found very, very interesting. That's a really cool way to do things in my opinion. And I like hearing about those types of interesting behind the scenes things. So this was rewarding for me in a sense. Uh, it was announced actually just this year that they're developing this story for a TV series. Don't know where it's going to land. I think at this point they're just kind of developing a pilot to shop around. So we'll see if it gets picked up, if when it gets picked up. TV. If they go the TV series route for this, I would hope that it's a bit less slow and probably actually show the processing portion. Like go away from the more artistic version of it and go more towards like a brutal, bloody version of horror, in my opinion. Because I think that'll bring more people in. Plus, I'd just kind of like to see that version, in my opinion, since I've already seen this version. Um, I'm not actually sure why, but for some reason, the very beginning of this film kind of reminded me of 2001 A Space Odyssey, and I think a lot of it kind of had to do with the kind of intense music that was playing. It looked very space-like, and everything was moving very, very slowly. It was, it was these very, um, graceful, smooth movements in a space-like, uh, situation with some very intense music and that just reminded me of 2001 a space odyssey which obviously is not a bad comparison to have made to a film because that is a phenomenal film that in my opinion still holds up i really love that uh the use of black and white to make a silhouette scene with the changing clothes portion that looked amazing plus that's a good way to like not show a whole lot of nudity early on i don't know if that was kind of one of their aims, but I just thought it was a really cool, like the white background and then the bodies are not lit up. So they look like they're silhouettes, but they're not, they're actually people. And, you know, I was thinking about it too. And I was like, that's kind of like the moment of her taking on the human life because she's putting on the clothing that she's putting on. And that's why the backdrop is white for like the beginning for life. 
and then all the times where she has the guys in the meat processing scenes it's all black because that's death that's the end of life at that point now granted you could say it was probably the end of life for the person she took clothing from but it was the beginning for her so i don't know if people you know with anything that i say like my thoughts on metaphors and stuff like that it's obviously just from my perspective. I could be totally wrong. You could hear it and be like, oh, no, I think that's kind of right. Or you could hear it and be like, yeah, you know, I don't think so. So you can put those feelings down there and, and your own theories, to be honest. I mean, I'm down to hear it. Uh, with the way this, sh uh, bleh, sorry, with the way this starts, you understand it's like most A24 four films that it wants to be slow and not tell you too much. It wants to give you the time to really think things through as they're occurring and then also encourage you after the film's done to kind of look back and be like what was the ending trying to say or what was the entire film trying to say now that we've seen the end what does it all mean how do i piece this together as you know what theme was under the skin of of this film and i like that about a24 that's typically how they do it I dig it. I understand there are people out there who really hate that type of film, and that's fair. You know, it's just different tastes. But for me, it's something I particularly love. When the female is shopping for clothes and it shows other people working on their appearance, it seems to make a statement about changing appearance to mask what you truly are, covering what's truly under the skin. So I think it was supposed to be make a comparison of here's an alien being trying to look human and what's on the inside what's under what she's putting on is not even human yet she looks like the humans around her who are different under the skin but they look the same on top of the skin not you know what i mean not the same but from a species standpoint the same because they're all female humans so i thought that was a very cool juxtaposition that they were showing at that point watching the interactions in the van make you realize how much an appealing look takes people's guard down that's one of the big things, and th that's one of the cool things about knowing that these were not scripted, that these were kind of, you know, hidden camera scenes, because those are, you know, genuine reactions of these guys just seeing, oh, she's very good looking, um, so immediately they're just nice, they're not guarded at all, and usually, like nowadays, if someone pulls over and they're going to ask you a question, you're not immediately like, oh, hey, let me help you out. You're, you're a little bit weary, at least at first. You know, it may turn to being, you know, very friendly and open, but it, initially you're guarded. But with, with someone who's very attractive in our society, a lot of the times it, you're immediately more open to things. And that obviously works for this creature, for the female, when she wants to go feed. Um, because looking good definitely helps in that instance for luring. The scene with the guy walking after the female in the blank setting and going underwater, yeah, like I said, that's the representation of the um, of the meat processing. But specifically, as he's going down into the water, it's showing that he is fi he's finally walking into her actual trap that she has set, and that he is disappearing, and the disappearing meaning his life fading out. And then, obviously, later, like I said, we see that digestion, which I thought was just phenomenal. So, um, cool way to represent it. But, like I said, for the TV show, I'd like to see the viscera and all that. A lot of it seems like the female observing humans and their behavior when she's hunting. And one of the great things is the way they do the cinematography, the way they shoot the shots, and the way they show... Uh, the female Scarlett Johansson's behavior and the way she interacts with humans makes her seem very alien, makes it seem more like she's in an observation mode and she's really just trying to soak as much in so she can reflect back what will make people feel like she is human so that she can kind of pull them in and get them to the place where she feeds, basically. And I thought that was interesting. They did a good way of conveying that in the film. When the second guy is consumed and he sees the first, oh yeah, this is the digestion part. I just put down, it's a crazy visual. It is a very crazy visual. Like I said, it looked great, but it also looked insane and gross at the same time. The way the female looks at people and barely interacts is like a person watching a colony of ants, which I believe was kind of an intentional thing in the beginning. If you remember in that white room where she was putting the clothing on and she found an ant on the body she picked it up and she was kind of looking at the ant. So I think that was kind of supposed to signal that later on when she's 
going around just observing all the humans. The way she's looking at the humans is the way she was looking at that ant as kind of like a different species, as a, you know, she's seeing the humans as like this colony of ants, basically, because she's another species, she's on the outside of it, she doesn't understand, and she's trying to kind of research, observe, and see how they move, why they do things socially the way they do, because, you know, like us being humans, when we look at a colony of ants, sure, there's been research done on them before, but we don't know, looking at that, like how they're communicating with one another. I mean, we know through research that it's done by pheromones, but we don't know what all that means, what that smells like, how they're actually interacting with each other as we're watching, and, you know, like how their society really works. Like, because we're outsiders, because we don't understand that. We're a different species. And that's exactly what's going on with the female in this. And that's one of the interesting things to really keep in your mind while you're watching the movie is that it's crazy to think that there's someone looking at our species from the outside and not understanding why we act the way we do and why we interact with each other the way we do and why we do what we do. And it's just really cool to watch it that way because it's hard for us to think that way because we are human. We just inherently know this stuff because we're raised into these societies and it just makes sense to us because that's how we're raised. But uh, it's just interesting to think about. I love kind of doing these mental gymnastics to understand that stuff. The part with the guys trying to break into the van reminded me kind of of when you see videos of people going on safari and then some sort of animals will like jump onto it and start like banging around and stuff. It shows kind of like a primal moment, almost kind of Neanderthalish, which I think was intentional to kind of make a point of you know, men being driven a lot by their libido and the looks of women, the physical beauty aspect to it. It's just very nature, you know, it, it, it's based nat human nature, obviously. So I thought that was a kind of a moment that was meant to be like that. When she picks up the guy with the facial disfigurement, who I talked about earlier, she treats him like anybody else because she doesn't see or care how he's different. Because just like when we look at ants, I'm going to use the same analogy, when we look at ants, we really can't tell the ants apart, even if some are kind of different, even if within that ant society, there's one that's disfigured. We, we don't really see that. And she doesn't see that either when she picks this person up with the facial disfigurement. She doesn't see that either. She's just like, yes, this is another human being. This is potentially food. Like, she just sees them as that and that's why she treats him normally and he's very like taken aback i guess he's not taken aback he's just surprised like he is a little bit guarded and he's kind of surprised he doesn't understand because of the way she's treating him so normally because he's not used to getting that from other people because a lot of what our society's geared around is physical appearance being the first impression and i know a lot of us you know try to get past that but even with trying to get past it, there's at least that little bit when you initially see a person where you think, oh, they look attractive or they don't look attractive or I notice something weird about them, like they have a lazy eye or, you know, they have a gap between their teeth or, you know, whatever. You know, it's, it, that's just where society is. So, uh, so when she picks them up, she treats them uh, differently. Uh, what she does care about in this instance is actually what's under the skin. And that's an interesting thing. It's And it's not a, from the standpoint of she's more interested in, you know, humans being human beings. It's she's interested in what's under the skin because it's exactly the same as her other victims. You know, what's under the skin looks exactly the same. What's on the, on the outside doesn't matter at all to her. She's only br t bringing in guys because that's what's her, what's easiest for her to get. I have a feeling that she would bring in women too if it was that if it was as easy as guys. I think she's just preying on guys because she's an attractive female or is looking like an attractive female, and they come to her. It's much easier. So, just saying. I assume the black being uh, the black being, which is would be her. You see when she uh, takes the guy with the facial disfigurement to the house is her true form. I mean, obviously in the end you you do realize that, but initially when you're seeing it in the mirror, uh, it's kind of like, what is going on here? And that is the moment where she's starting to see under her own skin at that point um, to herself. And that's where she's she is actually looking inward to kind of say, do I want to continue to do things like this? 
And that's the thing is her not her deciding not to eat this guy or process him for meat is the the turning moment for her and for the the story really. Uh, and the reason I think that she doesn't eat him is because of a few things. Because of one, how he reacts to her is one of the biggest things. And especially if you notice that every time they have that kind of meat processing moment, the guy is walking after her as she's walking away. He's pursuing her. Within this, this guy doesn't pursue her at all. He literally, when they're in that setting with the black setting, he's standing still and he's nervous and he's not pursuing her. He's kind of just like, so she has to come to him. And that's a moment where she questions this and she's like, why is this different? And then that begins to make her kind of think. And I think at that point, she sees under the skin in another sense and sees that this is not your typical male human being. This is something different. And then that starts her reflection. So I think it's a it's an interesting moment for that reason. And that's actually why she then goes to try to eat cake, where she, you know, she ends up throwing it up because she can't really eat that as a as being a uh alien, but she um she does that because she wants to change, because she wants to give being human a try or at least you know appear to be human obviously and then it goes further after that when she meets that guy on the bus they start you know having a actual connection as opposed to her just being like oh food she realizes there's more there that's when she stopped seeing the ant colony from the outside and she's kind of gone a little bit inside and is at least at this moment understanding very in depth one of those ants and understanding oh it's not just a food source it's not just some, you know, species I don't understand at this point. I have the ability to understand. I have the ability to experience what these humans experience within the society. And she obviously starts to really like it as things progress towards the end. Um, when sex doesn't work with that guy, uh, you see the disappointment on her face. You see the disappointment on his face, although he's not mad or anything. He just doesn't, you know, he doesn't understand, obviously. But she doesn't understand either. Um, she wants to be human and complete the connection with him at that point, which I think is a very interesting moment because that's kind of the first moment that I think you really, as an audience member, start to form some sort of connection with that being. Because prior to that, you, you really can't because it's not like a human uh, perspective that's being used. But once that happens where she can't have sex and there's that disappointment, she's she's showing a human trait she's showing human emotion and then that's the moment where the audience starts to kind of feel which then makes the end of the film actually impactful because otherwise it, it probably really wouldn't have been because if she's just this killing machine the whole time just going out there on the hunt you know you don't feel as bad so when she kind of changes her ways at the end and becomes more human and has human emotion that endears her to the audience and then the ending matters when she gets set on fire and everything uh, so I was assuming that this random biker guy who's throughout the film is like a male version of her actual species looking for her and she's kind of trying to stay away from him. I don't know. So maybe that's kind of like a metaphor for like spousal abuse or something. I don't know. Uh, that one kind of confused me. So if anyone out there has any ideas, put it down in the comments. But that was kind of best guess for me i guess we'll talk about that with the live stream i'll see if i'm sure other people will have some interesting ideas on that one in the end she couldn't get away from the sexual desire men seek in her which i think is a metaphor for what women in our society have to actually deal with on a day-to-day -day. if you're seeking it you're a cold monster if you're seeking sex and physical and physicality you're a monster a cold monster if you're not seeking it, you end up incurring the wrath of angry men who are overly driven by libido. And I think, you know, maybe you'll think, oh, you're wrong about that. But um, I think there's a lot to kind of support that idea throughout the film, at least the way I experienced it. So I thought that was interesting. I have a bunch of other thoughts, so stick with me at the end here. Uh, the cinematography is extremely smooth. Uh, there are a lot of appealing shots there's a bunch of really beautiful scenic shots in this it looks great it's directed really well the acting is really good all the technical stuff is outstanding and this is one of those movies you look at and you're like ah oh, this this jonathan glazer is an auteur it's definitely one of those auteur movies and i like it the film actually could be a really tough sell for some people 
uh, since it takes its time so much, but also because there's barely any human perspective in it. So that kind of makes it hard for people to really connect until towards the end, like I was talking about where she, you know, has, has a more human traits. Um, it kind of does, well, let me try and get the, what's going on with the lighting? Okay. That's actually kind of worse somehow. Sorry. Anyway, uh, it kind of does raise a question of individual species reality and how each species forms a reality within its own society that's created. So this is kind of like her versus humans, us versus ants type thing I was talking about before. How, how do different species view each other? That's kind of like a question that came up for me. They barely ever understand each other, other, understand each other or feel any sort of actual connection. Basically trying to say that when we look at another species, much like when she looks at the human species, you don't understand unless you kind of immerse yourself in it and potentially could start to understand. But there's also not a connection either because you only really connect with others of your own species except for some other d different things like that we've worked on a lot uh over the years like animal husbandry or having pets like cats and dogs you know that's taken a lot of time and now those kind of they feel like humans even though they're not humans so just something that kind of came up while i was when i was watching it there's also a point of how strong our basic human uh our basic animal drives are but how if you can intellectually override those, there's so much more to be enjoyed outside of the physical satisfaction. The whole time you're seeing the kind of base human instincts of mating, of feeding going on, until you get to that one connection that the female has with that guy who's kind of living out on the countryside, and then you see that once those animalistic tendencies are overridden, and it's more of an emotional um, intellectual connection, there's so much more there. Like she's experiencing, uh, excuse me, like she's experiencing, there's so much more there to living her life as a human being, as opposed to just masquerading as a human being to get food. She realizes that she can choose to not just live that way and be alone. She can have a connection with one of these human beings who she would have otherwise looked at as food and it's much more enriching in a different way. It's not, you know, it's not uh, nutritional sustenance. It is emotional and intellectual sustenance, which is pretty cool. Oops, sorry. I'm locking myself out of this. My apologies. Um, this is my final thought on it. When people in society focus primarily on what's above the skin, it's conditioning people to act a certain way leading to no connection and a society that operates with everyone looking out for just themselves, which is what you see in the beginning of the film. Once you focus under the skin, it creates connection and a more cohesive, compassionate society because there's understanding. And in the end, obviously, that's destroyed what's been created there, that all those connections uh, and the female's new connection to humanity by this guy who is obviously driven by libido because he tries to rape her until he realizes she's not human and then kills her because he can't have sex with her or maybe because he doesn't want to get caught or maybe it's just because he's afraid of knowing what that is or you know because we do have a problem as humans of i don't know what that thing is kill it that happens a lot so but i just thought that was a really interesting thing to point out so the uh, above the skin versus under the skin of how our society operates. And the ideal is obviously under the skin because then you can have a better, more compassionate society versus above the skin where everything's just based on looks and being fake and not knowing a person, which I feel like you have to get much deeper. You have to go under the skin in order to really um, understand why people, other people act the way they do, why they say the things they say, what their life experiences are, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this is a really good watch first time around. Like I said, I don't think it has a ton of rewatch value. So it looks really good. I do enjoy it, but it could have been cut down. It was a bit too long and drawn out, I do believe. Um, and like I said, like I was kind of confused, this biker guy, like what's the deal with that? Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, uh, with the possibility of five stars, half stars in play, I'm going to go ahead and give this a three and a half stars, mainly just because I think it needed to be cut down a bit. And as much as I did like the um, artistic representation of the um, 
the meat processing, I think they should have kind of paired that with something else. You know, maybe have a little more actual dialogue to this. Um, you know, like I said, watching it one time, I really enjoyed it. But after that, I think the value just starts to go down. Yeah, not much rewatch value. But three and a half stars. I was between three and a half and four, but I'm going three and a half. So anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Uh, put some comments down there about your thoughts on this film. Um, do me a quick favor though, hit that subscribe button if you like any of the videos I do, this one included. That's your best way to repay me because I'm just doing this for free and it means a lot to me when you subscribe. If you're already subscribed though, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're going to subscribe or you're already subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell because it'll let you know whenever a new video goes up or when I'm doing a live stream. It'll just pop up and say, hey, Carlin's live. So you can pop on and talk because we have a good time. But regardless, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.